close it, don't lock it. Okay, hello everybody. How do I turn this thing around? This is my constant question in life. There we go. Hi everybody. Um, it's Julie. I am going to be making cheese straws. Sorry, this is a weird angle. I just got it all lined up to so show you what's in the bowl. Um, I'm just going to sort of faff around here for a bit um, because I think we're a few minutes early. So just to make sure that we only start exactly at 10. We're trying to shut the babies out, which is why um, Charlotte is adjusting the door there. All right, okay, so Charlotte is with me. Come this side. Here we go. Just fill in my cells. There we go. <laughs> Big two of these mouth. Okay, so we're going to make cheese straws today. This recipe belonged to my great aunt. Um, I and she was. Try these. You can't wait to try these. I know, they're delicious. I can't believe we've ever made them for you. She was absolutely legendary in my family um, as a baker, um, and she, so was my grandmother. Yeah. Okay, let me show you Charlotte's reactions to the things I'm saying. So she was a legendary baker, and she was, and my grandmother were both the inspiration for a lot of what I do now. I didn't know she was. <laughs> my word. Anyway, so. Can you hard when I say the kids? You come down for a minute, please. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to send you outside. So, outside. so she had this recipe for cheese straws, and it was the thing. Everybody wanted it for their birthdays. It was the thing to eat in our family. So I'm just going to take you over because I wanted to show you this. I was going to say, does anyone else have a legendary baker and you know ancestor in their families? And if so, what was their recipe uh, that they made that was so awesome? I would love to hear that. Okay, I'm going to turn you around again so you don't have my ugly mug. Or maybe I'm not. I don't know. This, uh... You've got ugly mug. Oh, thanks, darling. Um, how do you turn this thing around? Okay, hold on a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is the recipe. I did post a picture of this, I think, on my Instagram the other day. I'm going to make sure I will repost it. I just wanted to read it to you. It's so lovely and it's in her writing and, you know, her lovely old style writing. Um... So it's a real like archive, um, actually just to go back here, I have a lot of similar things uh, in a whole big file that I got from my mom. Some are in my mom's writing, some I think it's just a lovely thing to have. Right, anyway, so Rhoda's cheese straws, here they are. Mix together three ounces of flour, three ounces of grated cheese, and a few grains of cayenne, pepper, and salt. Okay, into that rub lightly two ounces of butter. Mix to a stiff paste with raw egg yolk beaten in two teaspoons of cold ice water. Knead well and roll out, cut into strips, put into a quick oven and check that they don't brown and then bake until straw covered. I use 325. Hi Penny! <laughs> Actually I have a sister Penny and Penny who's a, a fan, so hi, hi to all the pennies. Okay, let me put it so that you can see what we're doing. Right, can you all see that? Does that work? Excellent. Okay. Sorry, just Do you want to help me? Yeah. Okay, then come stand here. Yeah. Right, so the very first thing we're going to do, here's how I've weighed up everything already to, so that you don't have to watch me weighing up stuff. Oh, it's boring. It is kind of boring, hey? Yeah. Okay, so there's our flour, just normal flour, whatever you've got. I'm going to sieve it just because that's, I'm sure, what my great Aunt Rhoda did. She was that kind of lady who did things properly. I like to shake it Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to shake, shake, shake it on. Okay, the purpose of sieving is to make sure that there are no lumps, to get some air in it, and specifically to make sure that they, in the old school times, that there weren't weevils or something living in your flour. These days I have almost never see weevils, only in like things like they've probably been on the shelf a bit long. But I think they, you know, times have changed a bit. It's not such a big deal. Right. Get those last little bits through the sieve there. Okay. So this recipe is given in ounces. I have converted everything for you. So the list, uh, I will um, load this uh, recipe onto my website. Um, but the list is given in grams. Uh, I am 100% a metric kind of girl. So... I can't be asked to do things in ounces. Um, right, so the three ounces that's of grated cheese. So there it is. I grated it on the fine grater. 
I'm going to add that all into my flour. Okay. Okay, don't leave anything behind. Are your hands clean, Miss Charlotte? No, I'll wash them and dry them nicely. Okay, so there we go. Can, can you just look and see what's going on there? Can you see what's in the bowl? Here, no, okay. Yes. Yes, okay. So we're going to mix that all together. That's just flour and um, the cheese. So far, so good. Nice and easy. Okay, then we're going to add a pinch of salt. So my husband, one of the very first things he ever told me about himself was that his two favorite Afrikaans words were renoster and trutteldier. My two favorite Afrikaans words are knipperki, which is what we're going to put here, a pinch, and maikiki, which is a small basket for those who don't speak Afrikaans. I'm also going to use some cayenne pepper. Somebody had commented previously they don't have cayenne pepper. You could use paprika, you could use maybe a few drops of Tabasco. I don't think, it's just to add a little hint of spice to it. And my children are going to be eating this, so I don't want to add a lot of spice. So I'm just going to do a quick little shake. Really not a lot, okay. So just a tiny bit, just to give it a bit of extra flavor. Mix that all together. Right, then the butter. So this butter was cold from the fridge this morning. You don't want it to come to room temperature. Often with things like uh, biscuits and things you do, but for pastry you want everything as cold as possible. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. Are you going to rub in? Do you know how to rub in? How do I rub in? Okay, are your hands dry? No, 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 dry, dry. <laughs> Not so dry then. Is my face in this picture? Uh, no, <laughs> down a bit. Down a bit. Hopefully at least they can all hear us. Are there a bunch of comments there? Is anyone commenting? Yes. Okay, okay bring me your dry hands. I'll go look. Okay, so there it is. I've cut it into small pieces. Stop yeah, wandering away and come here. <laughs> okay, Charlotte's going to rub it in. She doesn't know how to rub in, so this is a great exercise to teach people how to do rubbing in. Rubbing in is a very specific technique. It's a hand thing. It's a hand thing. So, yeah, we're making tree stars. <laughs> okay, so you're going to use just the tips of your fingers in the bowl and squash that butter together okay. and then go back in and the higher you lift it the more air you get in and the less hot it becomes so your hands hot okay you try you no, see you go for it okay but you got to stay in the in the picture okay rub in rub in rub in <laughs> headless body <laughs> sorry about the headless body we're having major problems with our ability to focus on things. At least Charlotte's head fits in the frame. <laughs> I'm smaller than you. Let me see if I can adjust it a bit so that maybe I'm in the frame. Oh, I don't know how. Maybe further away. <laughs> there, how's that? Oh no, then you're just looking at the sky. <laughs> oh my word. Alright, so sorry about that. Uh, let me just get my face. Sorry, I was so busy trying to adjust it. I somehow ended the video. I really should not be making videos. I need a, a camera person. If anyone after lockdown is up to this task, I am looking for volunteers. Right, so Charlotte is rubbing in. Let me go there closer so you can see what she's doing. Okay, so lift, rub it and lift it up high with your fingers. Okay, and then mix it up so you get some more flour by the butter bits. Okay. Like yeah, sorry about that, people. It's not not optimal, is it? <laughs> okay, but you didn't miss anything. All you missed was Charlotte rubbing in. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Missed the beginning. The beginning, um, Sally, unfortunately, is in a separate video now. <laughs> we Looking are. Forward, we'll leave it up. We are having some technical challenges here, but never mind. Just rub the butter, the flour, and the cheese together. And oh, actually, a pinch of salt, and then just a little bit of cayenne pepper if you don't have cayenne pepper. Just a bit of spice, or you could probably use a little bit of Tabasco, something with a bit of some chili flakes, and then I go just to add a bit of a zing to it. But, okay. But me and the cheekies are going to eat it so mommy didn't put too much. Yes, that's right. Okay. Now this still, still can't see. Right. Okay. How's can you that? See me? I can see you, but I definitely want to see myself. Okay, there we go. There we go. Right. Great, okay, so uh, is it this? Let's 
it's never look. Okay, I'll try not to be a headless body. You just have to listen to me look at my crouchy face. Okay, you go wash your hands. Okay, so what it should look like is something like sea sand. This obviously the, with the cheese it doesn't look really like sand. I don't know if you can see that, but that's basically how yeah, you look. Yeah, And as I said, it's a very specific technique. It makes for a very flaky pastry and a, it's my face in. Yes. And a crumbly kind of texture because it coats each little piece of flour with a bit of the butter fat, which stops it from becoming very chewy. Okay. So there it is. The next step, I've got one egg yolk here, and we're going to add two teaspoons of iced water to it. When you're working with pastry, when you're working with pastry, you want it to be as cold and as icy as possible. I have put the oven on, so it's getting a bit warm in here. But this is just some water. It's got a few blocks of ice in it. Nice cold water. So I'm going to mix my two tables, two teaspoons, sorry, of water in with that egg yolk, and I'm just going to mix it up a bit. Okay, that looked terribly appealing. And then we're going to add that to our rubbed in flour, butter, cheese stuff. Stuff. Okay. Right. Sorry. Sorry about our technical difficulties. Um. I Hopefully I can just edit the two videos together just now. Charlotte, what are you doing? <laughs> Alright. So you can see it's starting to come together. It's got a bit of like, sorry to get a bit I'm not mixing it, Mommy. Okay. Are you ready for this, Mrs? Yes. Okay. What so what we want to do is just bring it together. Let me just, just hold it up. Into a structure. Into a nice big ball. No. Yes. Sure say. We're going to cut the straw shapes in a second, so we're going to roll it out and cut the straws. Okay, do you want to keep bringing it together? So get all those dried out crumbly bits at the bottom. So I'm just going to tidy up these things here. So again, just a reminder, the batter would be nice and ice cold. The water would be nice and ice cold. Um, your cheese, nice and ice cold if you can. Um, hello to my sister Penny. Uh, as I said, my aunt was in the other video now, I'm totally muddled. I've got some a sister called Penny and a friend called Penny. So I've got lots of pennies. We got lots and lots Say of pennies. Say hello to Auntie Penny. Hello Auntie Penny. <laughs> We're making cheese straws. We're making cheese straws. So cheese. what I have was saying in the previous video is that this is the recipe of my great aunt Rhoda. And she was a legend. She was a legendary baker. Everybody wanted them for the birthday. Everybody did. And I recall getting them for my birthday one year. And my own whole box that I didn't have to share. And I am not sure if I did share it or not. But I remember being very pleased that it was mine. And I didn't have to share it if I didn't want to. Auntie Penny says hello. Hello Auntie Penny. Okay. I miss you. <laughs> we are missing all the people actually. We're tired of being in lockdown. <laughs> Yes, we have our lists for what we, all the things we're going to do for after lockdown. Except for my Lego part. That's for like after, after the virus is gone. The virus. Okay. Is that a nice ball? Not sure. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. So we've got a nice pastry ball there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just going to tip out the extra bits because we're going to want to waste anything. They can't see it. They can't see it. They can't see it. They can't see it. Where do I need to be? Uh, like just... This way. Don't push it there, yeah. Can they see now? No, now they can see it. Okay. So I'm just going to pat it down in a flat ball. So I, just because I'm feeling all nostalgic and my great aunt and the whole story, I dug out this adorable little flower shaker that I think belonged to my grandmother. Um, you used to put your money in that one. I did. <laughs> but I cleaned it out really well. <laughs> okay, so just a little bit of flour onto your surface so that it doesn't stick and a little hint of flour it's on the top. It's such a cute flower I know, thing. isn't it so cute? Is it in the picture? Yes, it's in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I can keep the hair on. So when you roll this out, you could do it between two layers of plastic like we do with our biscuits to stop it from drying out from the flour. But who could resist a, such an adorable flour thing? Okay. So I'm just going to roll it out, and the way that my great aunt made these, she rolled them reasonably thick, so we, and then cut them into very thin strips. 
so that when they came out of the oven, they were almost square from the side. Obviously long straws, but the length and the width and the breadth were equal. Not the length, the length was long. Okay, so something along those lines, probably about half a centimeter thickness. Just get these edges. Okay, and then because I'm cutting directly onto my surface, I'm going to use a palette knife to cut, so just something blunt-ish. I'm also going to make from the underneath before I start cutting. So you don't want to spend hours peeling it off Can I cut it? the surface. Can you cut with precision, my dear? Okay, let me cut a few for the peeps to see and then you can cut the rest. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want them to be too long. Um, obviously it's up to you how long you want them to be. Uh, I'm going to cut it in half this way first. There we go. One half for you, one half for me. One, there we go, exactly. Very echo. And I'm going to just lean it up because those edges, I think I'll re-roll those in a minute. Mm. Okay, and then I'm going to cut them quite narrow. Okay. No. Aww. I want to try some. I don't know if you could all hear that. She said, can I eat it? <laughs> okay. So just to go back to this recipe for a minute. One of the things it says in the recipe is to place it in a quick oven. So this is a very old-fashioned way of referring to oven temperatures. And a quick oven, a slow oven, basically depends on the temperature. She has then written, I use 325, which I'm assuming is 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which to my mind is not really a quick oven. I would say that is actually, so that in, in degrees Celsius is 163 degrees. There we go, so we've got some lovely straws. Can you see the straws? Yes. Yes, okay. So I'm going to line them up in my cookie tank tray. This is just lined with some... Um, Reusable non-stick mat, but you could just use some baking paper or just spray and cook it in. I'm going to line them up. Let's do this the easy way. There we go. Okay. So I have some keys. Oh gosh. Video of my child lining again. <laughs> she just love lockdown. I just love it. Right. Okay, come and cut some, Charlotte. How does it taste? Good. Just put your thumbs up in the video. Mm -hmm. So, sorry to get back to this situation. So, yeah, come cut. Okay, so cut them nice. Let's just trim it. Trim it up. I'm actually, what I'm going to do while Charlotte is cutting this batch, I'm going to put this batch into the oven. I've got a spare tray here. Okay, nice and, no, narrow, narrow, narrow. What are you doing? These are way too fast. They can't that size, like that. Okay. Okay. Precision, child, precision. Okay, so. Okay, so just to go back to this oven situation. So the, the quick oven. Like, like this. Yes, like that. I think is more along the lines of 200 degrees. So I set my oven for, one, for 200 and I've turned it as I put it down to 180. Uh, what You want to watch these like a hawk. They burn very easily. So I would even go so far as to say make sure you put your bowl on, which is what I'm doing now. I've put it for five minutes. Because they're so narrow, they cook quickly. And the speed at which they cook really depends on how thick you've rolled them and how wide they are. So, <laughs> somebody says you're so big. I know, I can't believe it. How old are you, Charlotte? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. That's crazy talk. When did that seven and a half years go by? Okay, have we finished cutting these? Are we good to go? Mm. Yes, these are excellent. See, now you're really getting the gist. It is hope you can be my assistant. Yay. Yay. <laughs> all these little pieces, don't waste them. I'm just going to ball them up again and re-roll them. Put your cut ones on top of the spoon. Okay. Never waste anything. It's all good stuff. And hopefully by the time we finish rolling these out, those ones will be ready so you can see what they look like. Ooh, and can I taste them? Yes, of course. Are you excited to taste them? I was 
saying earlier, if you have someone in your family that is a legendary baker, by all means, please comment on their name because I have names. Um, and also what it was that your family fought over to get from that person. Um, and I've been busy working on a little baking bingo for lockdown. I'll post it later. I haven't um, finished it yet. So you have to write down all your things that you've baked and then you want to post your baking bingo, bingo card. Yes. I don't know. I thought I might make a prize or something. I should have to figure out how to work. It's a baking class. How do we prove that they've made it in the lockdown? They send the picture. But anyway. Have any ideas of things that you would think should be on baking bingo? Lockdown baking bingo. I would love to hear that too. Julie's lockdown baking. Ju bingo. See, look, she's got this whole branding thing. Do you see that? Julie's lockdown baking bingo. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Are you are you my brand ambassador, Charlotte? Yes. Awesome. I love it. Okay. So, in this round, it's not really. Let's just take you to them. All right. <clears throat> so I've got it on. It's actually more like 200. Just depends on which way you angle the thing. Um, this oven is a smeg, and it has been my pride and joy for more than 10 years. And I actually think I've been having a relationship with this longer than I've had with my husband. I just I use, like this oven. <laughs> I just use this fan setting, and then as I say, I put it on quite hot because my concept of a quick oven is higher than 163. But perhaps this is why I don't make them the same way Rhoda does. And then just so you can peep in, those are the ones that I've just put in. And those are the ones I've put in just now. You can see they've risen up a little bit and they're bubbling away. I'm going to let all the heat out. Charlotte is beyond excited. Um, oh, Lola, how do you turn this thing around? Anyway, things are getting a bit out of control here. I will post a photo of the finished product just now and everyone enjoying them. I don't have much more to tell you. And if you want to see, again, my beautiful um, recipe book, recipe file. So what I love about this is that it is just so nostalgic. It, it calls to mind all those things that we... So this was something my mom made a lot, health loaf. It was like a nutty wheat, crushed wheat loaf. Delicious. Um... And seeing it in the, everyone's right, different writing. Um, this is my mom's loaf, and you can see here this is beet and bake loaf, Rhoda's recipe. So you know Rhoda was the one. Um, I don't want to sell my grandmother down the road. The thing she was an excellent cook as well and baker. Um, there, I drew a cake. Oh, and Charlotte, do you want us a picture of a cake? There you go. That's the cheese straw. That's the cake. That's the cheese straw. Cool. Okay. Right. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any ideas for baking bingo, let me know. If you want to uh, see us bake anything else, um, <laughs> let me know. And let us know what the family recipe is that is in your family. Because we would love to know. Oh, wait. Hang on. There's the timer. So it's, it's done five minutes. Let's have another check before I hang up. Yeah, I would say not quite done. They are almost there. I'll post a pic. Okay, lots of love. How do I switch this thing off again?